Hey, Facebook fans, Pastor Sullivan here answering your questions with ATP. Ask the pastor. Today's question is, Dear Pastor, how do I tell if it's God testing me or the devil tempting me? You don't. Here's why. Sometimes God will pull his protective hand back slightly from the Christian. Never all the way, because he never abandons those who are his by faith in Christ Jesus. However, he will pull his divine protective hand back slightly. Satan then uses this as an opportunity to sneak his way in between God's hand and our lives, so to speak, and muck things up, uh, to tempt us into all sorts of sin and great vice, um, doubt, unbelief, despair, false belief about God. All of these things are the works of Satan in our lives. So in one sense, Satan is tempting and God is not, because God tempts no one, St. James says. Uh, however, uh, we have to remember, too, that Satan is a creature. He is an angel who was fallen, uh, so therefore he was created within uh, the six-day creation. Whenever the angels were created, fell sometime during that time between Genesis 1 and 2 and chapter 3. So Satan, being a creature, is not an equal opposite to God. He is still a creature, uh, which means that he still uh, has to operate within the parameters that God has set for them. This also led Luther in many other places uh, to call him God's devil. Uh, he's like a dog on a leash. He can only go so far. He can only wreak so much havoc in our lives and in the world uh, because God puts parameters on him. And this is a good and gracious thing on his part. Think about uh, the book of Job, the first and second chapter. Satan wanders the earth, and he comes before God's throne. Um, and he, uh, the, Lord's, the Lord is the one who says to him, Have you considered my servant Job? And so Satan goes... And he tempts Job uh, and tries to drive him to despair and ultimately to unbelief. But the Lord says, you can't touch him in his body. And Satan is bound by that word of God. Uh, so you can see how God pulls his protective hand back from Job just slightly. Then in chapter 2, Satan comes back to the Lord and the Lord allows Satan to touch him in his body. And that's where he gets the boils and all that physical stuff wrong with him as well then. So we often see... Uh, in temptation, that it is Satan doing it, since God tempts no one, uh, but that ultimately, since the Lord is in control of everything, including Satan, that he's the one uh, that is allowing Satan to do this. This now is the part where faith enters in, because God does chastise his own as sons. Uh, this is in the book of Proverbs and also in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, where the author of Hebrews says that if you are true sons and not illegitimate ones, God will chastise you. Uh, God will discipline you as sons because those whom he doesn't discipline are illegitimate sons. This is how he's doing that, uh, by allowing Satan to tempt, uh, by allowing Satan to work a little bit, uh, so that we, in faith then, Keep our eyes focused on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, knowing that through Christ and in Christ, God is good and gracious no matter what he may allow to befall us, no matter what cross, no matter what trial, no matter what suffering that he may lay upon our shoulders, he will lift it in good time according to his will, which we confess is always good and gracious. So in temptation, it really doesn't matter whether it's a testing or a tempting because it's both. The point in the struggle is, look to Christ in faith, attach yourself to his promises, so that your faith is grabbing onto those and holding onto those promises for dear life, for he has promised to bring you through that temptation. He has promised to preserve you if you look to him in faith. So, great question, by the way. Um, that's it for today. If you have any questions, make sure and email us at atpholycross at gmail.com. That's atpholycross at gmail.com. And we'll see you next week.